All right, so what's going on everybody? So I haven't made any content in a little while and I've been just really busy. Um, been trying to get the car going at the same time be running to run my business. So I do apologize for the lack of content. Um, today we have a video, the title of the video already know that we're gonna be working on the car. Um, now the all wood drive stuff is done. I did drive the car being all wood drive, but maybe about a week or so I did drive it. And man, when I tell you that shit is something else, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, the way the car handles being all wood drive is just absolutely amazing. Like, I had my car front wheel drive, what, seven, eight years, and then this year I just made it all, completely all wood drive. And it's absolutely a whole different uh, beast. So we were tuning the car, it was all wood drive at the time. Um, we took it out. We were on the highway. We were doing some pulls and then, you know, my tuner was remote tuning it. He was at his house and we just had our phone with the hotspot on. And then we broke something in the head. Uh, there's little rollers. I will show you in the video when we start taking the head off. And it broke and I believe those being broken when we were tuning the car, it might have bent the valve. I'm pretty sure it did bend the valve. So I can guarantee it. I did a compression test and it's zero all across. I triple checked the timing and still zero. So pretty sure the the valves been. I checked them before I put everything back together, but I mean you can only see so much sometimes. And um, so I'm gonna be taking the head off. I'm be showing you guys the way I do it on my car because it's a little different from the other cars. Since my car, the engine bay is shaved so much that I have found ways to make it make it work. It was a difficult at first, but now it's just it's just super easy for me to do it. So I'm gonna show you the ways I do it mine. We're gonna take the head off, and once the head is off, I gotta take it to the machine shop, and I gotta order new valves and springs. I'm just gonna do the new package. I am gonna leave the stock cams. I don't really plan on making the car like stupid drag car or anything like that. Just, I like to enjoy my car and drive it still. So that is the plan. And again, I'm sorry for the lack of content. I just been really busy with making uh like new products and like ac tuck kits for different cars so that's a lot of my free time been going and i still go to school too so it's i have a really busy schedule so now i got the time to make you guys a video and i'm very happy to show you guys the way i do my things so we're gonna go ahead and do it take the head off and show you the steps that i the way i do it so let's get to it all right guys so here it is um now you can see that a lot of has changed in the car since last time i probably made a video here on youtube and um obviously you can tell we got a big front mount intercooler uh we got another small radiator as well and i also went with a center feed manifold uh ended up changing the setup a little bit the time came and honestly the opportunity to do it was just there so i just took it so again i'm gonna be taking the head off i'm gonna have to take off the manifold the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold um isn't too difficult it just takes a little bit of time consuming that's about it so i do do it different compared to somebody else who wouldn't have a bay like mine so on my car i actually have to tilt the motor that way that way you can see the holes right here kind of kinking up i have to tilt the motor out to the my right to my passenger side in order to get to the bolts of the timing cover without me doing that i don't have a lot of room here because again, we ended up putting like a metal plate here and ended up shaving this whole entire side and as well the other side. But the other side is a little uh, better to work with but than this side. But that is one of the ways I do mine. I literally have to tilt the motor out this way. Without doing it, it's just not possible for me to get all the 10 millimeter bolts on that side. But yeah, there's been a lot of changes that's been going on. And it kind of sucks that I had the issue with the head, but it's not a big deal. I am getting all the parts together as we speak. So as soon as that arrives, take it to the machine shop and let them do all the necessary work they have to. But yeah, I went with the Speed Factory 1000 horsepower intercooler. I also went with a Ross machine um, throttle body and K-Tune center feed manifold. Um, got a plug on that one. They hooked, they hooked, they hooked me up. And then I just went with the EK um, radiator. Uh, this is a three inch cord, so it's pretty helpful. And then I welded the AM fitting bungs onto the radiator, the bottom and the, the top. So that one came out really nice. That's about pretty much the only change that I did change. And then I also had to modify 
my intercooler piping both sides in order to work but um that's about it that i had going on um i think i did change all the few things but not necessary much that you can see here in the front but uh yeah i'm gonna be go ahead and taking off the head off i'm gonna go ahead and take the timing cover uh the valve cover off and show you the things that actually broke on the head that way you guys can see and then taking the rest of the stuff off all right guys so i got the time uh the time <laughs> i got the valve cover off so let me show you what i actually broke when um we were tuning the car so you can see these little rollers right here so the little rollers right here that go push the cam up and down so all the antique ones literally all of them had broken and i had metal all over the place and like little needles um kind of look like little needles everywhere all over the all over the head and the bottom of the oil pan so i took the oil pan off i took the head off i cleaned all the metal out and then i think that causing all of them to break i ended up bending the valves uh, that's the only explanation that i have right now i literally cannot explain anything else i did the compression test i did a few other tests as well and the, the valves got to be bent so and even if they are not bent i need to do the timing i need to do an upgrade on the valves and everything else because the car is really pushing more than it should be but um yeah this, this is what ended up happening all of them broke every single one of them was broken so it's kind of weird i talked to a few people and they really said it normally doesn't happen but they've seen it happen to other people but for all of them to break they said that was really weird so that's what ended up happening and why the car been down for so long other than that the car been good there was really no issue besides that on the car so i'm gonna go ahead and take off the intake manifold the exhaust and start removing the head little by little so let's get to it <music> So there it is. I ended up taking the waterfall off. So I'm gonna go ahead and double check. Um, you know, go look over the valves. I know they have to be bent. I just have a bad feeling about them. Plus, like I said, I already checked all the stuff that I did. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take off the exhaust manifold. Usually I take off my uh, big exhaust pipe off, then the little one, and then that's how I usually gives me room to take it out. It's a little bit complicated, but that's the way. I found ways to work best for me right now. But the intakes are off. We'll go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out. All right, so I just took off the exhaust piping and one of the wastegates for the bottom because I do have two wastegates. And that being for boost creep because this manifold used to have a lot of it. And pretty much it was the only way to fix it. So now that I have that off, I took off the feed line for the turbo. Now I gotta lift it up a little bit, take off the studs from the back. And the biggest thing that I hate about doing this is obviously removing the drain line. It's such a pain in the ass to do it, especially by myself. So when usually I have somebody else helping me, it's super easy. But um, that's what I gotta do. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And we're pretty much halfway there. And then take the timing cover off and pretty much get everything off timing and take the head off. So it isn't too difficult. I've maybe been doing this about 30, 35 minutes. It may seem like it maybe was like 15 seconds for you guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, should be almost there. All right guys, so here it is. This is what I'm talking about, the pain in the ass to take out the drain line. So I ended up removing all the exhaust bolts. And right now all I gotta do is remove the drain line. It'll come off. I already disconnected all the backing lines. But if I had somebody else helping me here, it'd be a lot easier. But I have to tilt the motor, not the motor, the exhaust, kind of in that angle and hold it like that so I can just disconnect uh, the drain line again. So I'm almost there. Once I get this off, all I got to do is take the timing cover off, get it off timing, and start taking off the cams and everything else. But uh, it isn't too difficult, like I said from the beginning. It's just mainly everything is just time consuming, but I'm almost right, so there. There it is. Got the manifold off, and now we're almost there. Now, somebody's gonna ask what size turbo that is. That is a Precision 
5862 ball bearing. Right, guys, so here's where I got. I ended up jacking the car up. And I also have the Hyper Freight Famous Jack Stands, okay? So I got the jack stand under it, and then I have my jack, actual jack, under the motor holding the oil pan up. So when I do that, I'm able to take off the three bolts right here. And also allows me to tilt the motor out that way. So you can see here, I don't have those motor mounts on that. And of course, I don't have the ones on this side. So me allowing to tilt the motor this way, I'm able to take off all the old 10 millimeter bolts uh, holding the time cover gasket. So I already got it all loose. I ended up taking them all off. It takes a little bit of time. Like I said, I don't have a lot of room here. I'm sure it would be easier if I don't have my base shave as it is. But this is the way I do mine right here. And it works really, really well. And it gives me a lot of room. But I'm, I have to take off that motor mount over there. So I'm able to tilt the motor out that way. So I'm almost there. I got to take the timing cover off. Once that's off, take it off timing and start taking off the head. All right, guys. So I took the timing cover off. And then I also ended up taking the tensioner off. So you can see here. So it's off timing right now. So I'm not too worried about being on timing right now at the moment. Obviously, I'm going to have to take off the head. And now that that's off, i got to take off all the 12 millimeter bolts that are holding the cam. And I'm going to start doing that right now and get it going. We're almost taking off the head off. It's got a little bit more left. And we're almost there. <laughs> guys got the cams off and i just checked the valves and i should have done this before i put everything back together but i guess you can say i got a little bit of comfortable and i didn't think nothing happened to it and right now i was checking the valves and then you can see i don't know how much you can see but that one is open let me see i'm trying to get the best lighting for you guys so you can barely see much but uh, you can see i don't know if it'll focus but it's a little bit you can see right there and now uh, there's no pressure on the valve or anything and those are vent literally every single one of them has a little bent in them it's just slightly enough and that's what was not making it get any compression at all now i don't know how bad are the ones for the exhaust which i don't believe anything's wrong with them but swapping all of them out and of course it's gonna get all new valves and springs and retain just everything so i don't have to worry about it at the moment but um, yeah, that's why the car wasn't starting at all. So now I just got to take off the 14 millimeter um, uh, bolt and the head should come right off. All right, guys, so here's the head, here are the valves. And a second, I already knew. So we can see here, we have one of the intake ones and you can see how the difference compared to that one to this. Just look at the difference, how much they actually lift up that one too. You can see that one not so much but um it's really there's one right there for the exhaust just a little bit this one right here not much and that one right there a little bit so kind of sucks but kind of happy that i found the issue it definitely could have been worse um you know the valves could have technically broke in the head but they didn't so sucks but at the same time like i said it could have just been a lot worse so I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking everything off the head and uh, like the VTEC solenoids, any little gasket or anything like this so I can take it to the machine shop so they can do their work and I can have this back and I can make another video for you guys putting everything back together and torquing everything down to spec so you guys can see that and maybe learn a thing or two. But uh, there it is guys, appreciate you guys watching. I want to have the car out and about already so I can enjoy it show you guys more of the old wheel drive stuff so i am going to be replacing the arp head studs those i already used them about three four times already so i do not feel comfortable tightening everything back down again with those same arp head studs so i already have another set here in stock so those are not going to be used so everything on the engine looks good i already went and double checked everything but just like i figured the valves were bent but um there it is, guys. Again, appreciate you guys watching. I will make another video for you guys very soon.